Well, hello, church family. It's uh, so good to see you. And uh, if you remember, back in January, we started our study through, or reading through the Bible. And so this is week number 16. And so I, I know I've talked to some of you, and some of you are way ahead. And uh, I've talked to some, and you are right on track. And maybe some of you are, are behind. And, th- and let me just tell you, that's okay. Uh, keep reading, keep pressing into God's Word. This is a challenge for our congregation, so I want us to be challenged and to grow spiritually in the Word. And so this week's reading was from 1 Samuel uh, 17 through uh, basically the end of the chapter or end of the book uh, 31. And so, and I just want to pick up just a few spots and look at that, uh, unpack it, and then so that we can maybe apply it to our lives. And so something that really stuck out to me was chapter 18, 19, and 20. And so we're just going to real briefly look through that next 10, 15 minutes, and uh, hopefully you are challenged. Hopefully you will be uh, have the, the gospel speak into your lives during this time. And so if we look at uh, the reading, we see in chapter 17, where David has just defeated Goliath, or or should I say, God had just defeated Goliath through David. And so the tension between David and Saul is really high at this time. And uh, this young runt uh, is on an epic level. Uh, Everybody in the the city and in Israel loves David and... The only one person that does not love David at this time is Saul. And so uh, Saul can see his kingdom slipping from his grasp. And he knows it's just a matter of time before David uh, takes uh, his his reign will begin. And so we saw where uh, back in chapter 16, David was anointed as king, right? And if if we remember the the Hebrew word, uh, anointed one is translated to Messiah. So in terms, David is the Messiah of Judah at this time. And so we see, and, we, and that's where we pick up in chapter 18. We see that uh, Saul will not let David go back home. Rather, he brings David right into the royal family and he knows that David is getting stronger and stronger each and every day. And we see that in the chapter 18, 19, 20, we see where David, or Saul makes several attempts to sway young David. He even tries to give Michael to marry the young David. But at this stage, we can say Saul comes to hate the coming Messiah. The one who has been anointed to replace him, by contrast with his own family members, love, honor, and commit to the coming Messiah. And so we see this tension, right? The tension between Saul and David. Even Saul's own family has turned on Saul and is now loving David more. And there's a distinctive commitment to David is a picture of those who will embrace God's plan as opposed to those who reject it. And so we see where Saul rejects God's plan. Saul redre- rejects God and because he rejects David. And we see this pattern is established, and we want to see this later on with Jesus. right? The religious leaders, we're walking through the Gospel of Mark uh, Sunday mornings. We see where the religious leaders are rejecting Jesus, rejecting him as the rightful Messiah, and uh, looking past him. They're, they're thinking that there's someone else. And really what happens to the religious leaders and Saul, what I thought was amazing is that there's this jealousy, right? Saul has this jealousy of David. And in fact, this jealousy is so great, he tries to murder David. And what happens with Jesus the religious leader's jealousy because Jesus is more popular. People are more astonished. People are following uh, the true Messiah. They kill him, right? And they put him on the cross. But we see where Jesus' plan was to go to the cross and was to take away sin. See, but David's not so much. So we see, and that's what I want you to think about is this jealousy and this jealousy that can creep up into our lives, right? I don't know if you've ever been jealous. I'm sure you have been jealous of someone or something. 
And so I think we can all relate with Saul here a little bit. We all hopefully will be like David, right? Not be like David, but be like Christ. Where we are placing our thoughts on Christ or on God, looking for God's way and not our own way, right? It's like what John the Baptist said in John 3, 30. He said, uh, I must decrease so Christ can increase, so his ministry can continue. And so we, church, as a church family, we have to decrease our lives so that Christ can increase in our lives. So back to David and Saul. It's no wonder Saul attempted to bring David into the royal family. Uh, he was a young and promising warrior. See, David would have been would be a great political and mil- military ally. His presence in the in the royal house would certainly boost morale. However, the t- texts give us motivations at work in Saul as well. Right? We see Saul experiencing the, the pains of jealousy in his heart and life. If we look at 18:7, 18, 18 verse 7, uh, where it says and they danced, and the women sang, Saul killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Right? They give Saul a little bit of honor, but they give David a greater honor. And so you can already see this tension, right? The king is, they're, they're singing a song, and the king is like, well, yeah, I've killed thousands. And that's pretty impressive, right? That's, I mean, that's, no one should be ashamed of that. But then the next line is, and David's killed Ten of thousands, right? And so you can already see this this tension building up. You can see where people are swaying. If we keep reading eight and nine, look, look at what what happens to Saul. Look what happens in his life. Saul was furious and re- resented this song. They credited ten thousands to David. He complained, but they only credited me with thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul watched David jealously from that day forward. And so you get this picture. I mean, this is just great, great. uh, The scripture is just fantastic. And so you see where uh, you can almost picture this, like Saul's just sitting there kind of mumbling to himself, talking to himself. And then he's like, wait, they credit me to a thousand, David 10,000. And he keeps his eye on it. He keeps a close watch. And so that's another reason why he invited him to the house. He wouldn't let him go back. It even goes so far as trying to pin David to the wall because of his rage, right? Even David's harp would not calm Saul down enough. Saul was eaten up with jealousy that he threw a spear at the young boy trying to murder him in verses 10 and 11, right? Jealousy is a terrible emotion. Jealousy is a scab that we keep picking only to have the wound fester, Right? Jealousy is a hungry that, hunger that simply cannot be satisfied. The more you eat, the empty, emptier you feel. And it forces you to feed once again. See, jealousy is a pain that we will not leave. It persists. It pounds us until we are pushed uh, toe point and, and to no return. See, jealousy is terrible and a harsh master. We see Saul's hatred towards David, and it expressed in chapter 18. There are three attempts to murder David. One we saw just a second ago where Saul tries to throw a spear at David in verses 10 and 11. But David escapes that time, right? He gets away. The second attempt, uh, Saul tries to give his elder's daughter to David so that he would be married and that he would have to go and fight the Philistines and perhaps die. But David escapes, escapes the second by not marrying the eldest daughter. And the third time, Saul gives his daughter to Michael, or gives his daughter Michael to David, so he would die. So he had to fight and, um, and, and, and fight the Philistines and maybe die. And so Saul asks for a hundred foreskins, but David comes back with two hundred, right? And so it's incredible. And then uh, the fourth time David tries to, to murder Saul in, in the 18, 19, 20, is he speaks to his family and his servants and orders them to kill David for a fourth time. I mean, right? Fourth time's the charm, but to no avail. See, Saul's jealousy is out of control. A, a man has lost his sanity and his grip on life. See, Saul's own family rebels against his plans to kill David. Uh, this should tell us something important. Saul does not have the support of the Lord, his family, or his people. 
See, this is what jealousy does to us. It, it eats us on in the inside. And so if you're struggling with jealousy or you ever struggle, or maybe when you will struggle with jealousy, just remember these things. And remember these things and how, and so that's where I want to transition to, how can we kill jealousy with the gospel? How, how can we put an end to jealousy in our hearts, jealousy in our minds, where it doesn't move any further than that? See, we can learn from Saul's, Saul's jealous heart. And here's another thing. Jealousy appears in our lives when we are not content with what God has proclaimed over us. Right? When we choose ourself over our Savior, uh, bad things happen. Right? I want you to think about uh, when, do you, when are you not content with what the Lord has given you? Right? That's when jealousy creeps in, when we're not content. Right? It's almost as we are coveting. We begin to, to covet things. Right? And so think about the times when you're not content. And think about the times where you know, God's been so gracious. God has been so good to you. And so jealousy appears in our lives when we are not content with what God has proclaimed over us. Jealousy re- re- reveals our deepest love. All right? I know I'm, I'm stepping on some toes, but jealousy reveals our deepest love. Saul's greatest love was himself and not God. Right? If we are jealous, we are put more weight on ourselves, our wants, our needs, our desires, right, than the way of God's desire for us. See, if we love rather than. If we love self rather than God and his plan, we, we, again, we are in deep trouble. And so think about where Jesus is teaching. Jesus is proclaiming that we, we should have the, minds, the mind of God, not of man, right? When Jesus rebukes Peter for, you know, uh, calls him the devil, he says, you have the thoughts of man and not God, right? And so when we start thinking of our own well, our own self, and we're always thinking about number one, right? Dale, am I thinking about myself or am I thinking about God? And so let's put that to death and let's have the things of God on our minds. See, uh, the third thing, jealousy is closely related to fear. Jealousy is closely related to fear. Notice that Saul is constantly afraid of David. And uh, you look at verse eight, uh, chapter 18, verse 12, verse 15, verse 29. Saul is very jealous of David. Uh, and he's afraid of David. So jealousy and fear go hand in hand. Life does not have to be filled with fear and jealousy. What, what kills fear and jealousy in life? And this is the thing. I want you to hear this. Nothing other than the perfect love found in Christ. Right? Nothing kills fear and jealousy. What, nothing like the love of Christ. And so here's a few things to help us remember. One, in Christ, there is nothing we can do to make God love us more right? Hear that, church. This is so important. There is nothing you can do that will make God love you more, right? And some of you are like, yeah, I know that, Dale. I, I'm in, in total agreement. And, and so, but here's the second thing. There is nothing that you have done to make God love you less or do, right? There is nothing you have done or do that will make God love you less, And that is not to give you a a get out of jail free card and go around and do whatever you want. But I know there's a lot of us that maybe feel shame about our past or feel shame about things we have done. But here's the thing. God doesn't love you less. The second thing is this, is that Christ is all we need for everlasting joy. Christ is all you need for everlasting joy, right? That's all we need is Christ. You can take anything else from us, but if you keep, if we have Christ, we have joy in life. Third thing, as Christ has been to us, so we will be to others. Right? These are all just great ways to defeat jealousy, to make sure that we don't have a fearful heart in the gospel. Right? As Christ has been to us, we will be to others. Right? Are, are we happy when the other person gets a promotion and we don't? Right? Are we uh, happy for people when they succeed and we're not jealous or upset or angry? Let us be happy for others as, as Christ has been to us. 
And then as we pray, we will measure Christ's compassion by the power of the cross and the resurrection, right? So if you're dealing with jealousy today or you will deal with jealousy uh, in the past or in the future, right? Remember these things. Ask Jesus to remind you of his love, right? Think about Christ's love for you. And that is worth more than anything in this world. Uh, Think about your identity in Christ, that you are now a child of God, forgiven of sin. Be able to stand in right relationship with Christ. That's incredible. That's who you are, right? You're not a sinner. You're a child of God. And that's that's amazing, right? Uh, Remember his purpose in your life. Right? It's to do to others as he has done to you. Right, that, That's what you're here to do is to share the gospel, share the good news with others. And remember his plan that you will be with him for all, forever, for eternity. That uh, it, heaven, I'm not looking forward uh, to the mansion or the street of gold or, you know, what I'm looking forward to being with God, being with Jesus forever and ever. So ask Jesus, ask God to remind you of these things today. Look at what he has done for you. Again, jealousy is a nasty thing, right? And all of us have experienced it. Saul experienced it and it became the end of him. Right? Don't let it become the end of you. So again, uh, our reading plan, uh, we'll be reading again uh, next week. And so we'll start in 2 Samuel and we'll run, it looks like, to 2 Samuel verse 12, chapter 12. And so uh, it's just so good. If you haven't started reading with us, uh, start now, pick up now. Pick up in week 17 and start reading with us. And then you can uh, finish the Bible uh, within a year. And that would just be fantastic good. I hope it has been, been beneficial to you. I hope you've been challenged. I hope you've been, feel like uh, you are growing closer to the Lord each and every day. Let me pray for us. Father, again, I thank you so much for First Baptist. I thank you for uh, their hunger for God's word. Uh, Father, just in these unique times, we have an opportunity to get into the word, to dive into the word and to pursue after you, who you are, what you're like. And we see so much that you teach us, so much that uh, we are still experienced, we are still going through is just one of those things is jealousy. Uh, Father, even your Ten Commandments, you tell us not to covet. Uh, And so, Father, uh, help our hearts. Help us not to be jealous. Help us not to covet things that we don't have. But let us be content in you because you're enough. You are enough. Father, just pray as we are uh, under the stay-at-home order that we would, um, our our minds would be sharp. Uh, Our thoughts would be about you. We love you and we thank you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. So next week we'll, we'll dive through 2 Samuel and look at those first 12 chapters and study. So I encourage you, read those. Uh, and maybe there's something that stuck out to you and I didn't touch on. And so that's just something that uh, impressed on me. And so uh, open up those scriptures. God bless.